One day, I was sat in my room surfing the web when I came across a photograph that immediately caught my attention. The photo showed a young white woman in 19th century clothing posing for the camera with a serious expression on her face. What struck me the most about the image was the thick, dark tattoo on her chin. Who was this woman and what did the tattoo mean? Chances are you're probably asking the exact same thing, so allow me to tell you her incredible story. The woman in the photo was Olive Oatman, born in Illinois, America in 1837. She came from a Mormon family and following a disagreement among the Mormon community, the family decided to follow religious leader James Brewster, whose followers were called Brewsterites. Around 90 Brewsterites set off in 1850 on a wagon train bound for the Colorado River. Disputes among the group caused them to split off from each other and the Oatman family chose to travel a different route. Despite the inclement terrain and the danger of hostile Native American tribes, the Oatman parents were determined to find a place where they could build a future for their seven children. This would never come to pass, however, as shortly after they set off on their solo journey, the family were attacked by a group of Native American Yavapai tribesmen in Arizona. Both parents and four of the seven children were killed there and then. Their only surviving son, Lorenzo, regained consciousness some time later to find he had been badly injured, his family was dead, and his two sisters, Olive and Marianne, were missing. He walked until he reached a settlement where he could receive treatment. Meanwhile, 14-year-old Olive and 7-year-old Mary Ann were being held as slaves in a Yavapai village where they were forced to carry water and forage for food and firewood. Their good fortune came a year later when a group of Mojave Native Americans visited the village and agreed to trade the girls for two horses, blankets and food. Olive and Mary Ann walked for several hundred miles as they accompanied the Mojave tribe down the Colorado River. During their time with the Mojave, the girls were treated with much more kindness and affection than they had been treated by the Yavapai and were adopted into the chief's family. As was the tribe's custom, the Omen girls were given tattoos on their chin with ink from a blue cactus to ensure a good afterlife. This made Olive the first documented American woman with tattoos. Four years later, however, in 1855, tragedy struck again when a severe drought caused a shortage of food. Many of the Mojave tribe died of starvation, as well as Olive's younger sister, Mary Ann. Meanwhile, Olive's surviving brother, Lorenzo, was still searching for his sisters and received a tip-off that they were living with the Mojave. The authorities at Fort Yuma sent a spokesperson several times to the Mojave tribe to negotiate Olive's return to white society, but they heavily resisted, despite being offered blankets and horses in exchange. The Mojave expressed great affection for Olive and did not want to let her go. However, the authorities at Yuma then threatened to attack the Mojave if they did not release Olive. Eventually, after much discussion, Olive and the Mojave agreed to these terms and in 1856 she journeyed to Fort Yuma where she was reunited with her surviving brother, Lorenzo. The following year, in 1857, Olive's biography was published entitled Life Among the Indians, The Captivity of the Oatman Girls. It became an instant bestseller. Olive moved to New York to do a promotional tour for the book, one of the few occasions she appeared in public without a veil covering her tattoo. Lorenzo and Olive were able to receive an education at the University of the Pacific, thanks to royalties from the book. In 1865, Olive married John Fairchild, who, similar to her, had lost his brother to an attack by Native Americans ten years prior. The couple eventually moved to Texas, where John made his fortune in banking and real estate. In 1876, the couple adopted a baby girl they named Mary Elizabeth, who they affectionately called Mammy. Olive always maintained an interest in helping orphans, but rarely discussed the murder of her own parents or her experiences as a captive. Olive died of a heart attack in 1903, aged 65. The town of Oatman in Arizona is named in her honour. Her legacy was revived in 2009 when a biography of her life was published called The Blue Tattoo, The Life of Olive Oatman. And there you have it, the incredible story of Olive Oatman, one of survival, resilience, forgiveness and the endurance of the human spirit. Freedom is